Hello and welcome to The Pulse. Whether you knew it or not, Friday 22nd of March was World Water Day, a day devoted to focusing attention on the importance of fresh water and advocating for the sustainable management of freshwater resources. Last week in the Legislative Council, lawmakers discussed Hong Kong's freshwater needs, some 80% of which are currently met by water from Dongzheng. Hong Kong legislators have criticised the government for not having a long-term water policy. Dongzheng is not an unlimited resource or necessarily an unpolluted one, and it can be used as a political bargaining chip. Over the Easter holiday, the Pulse went to the source of the Dongzheng River to see some of the problems authorities face in water management. Hong Kong spends $3.5 billion of taxpayers' money a year to buy Dongzheng water. Increasingly, some are questioning whether this is money well spent or just how good the quality of that water is. Some environmentalists are less than impressed about what they've witnessed at the river source. In 2008, under its National Ecological Functional Zoning Plan, the Chinese government listed the Dongzheng source area as a key area for water conservation. Certain business activities, such as wood felling, are prohibited. Ecotourism started here around 2009 and has brought around 700 Dongzheng Yuan villagers a hope of extra income. However, the place has no waste management policy to accompany the ecotourism development. The Shunwu County government did allocate a little budget for a septic tank to stop untreated human feces going into the river. Still, it isn't enough to prevent pollution of the water. There's another, less immediately visible threat with the potential to do more damage to the environment and the people. Ms Zhao is a primary teacher in the village. She also runs an ecotourism guest house that enabled her to earn 10,000 yuan last year. But she still won't give up farming oranges, a popular local produce from Dongjiang Yuan. Ji Cheng oranges are a specialty of the area. Those farmed in Gaojiao, including Dongjiang Yuan, have a 48% market share across the nation. Even in poor harvest seasons, villagers like Ms. Zhao can earn 50,000 yuan a year. However, even she thinks water conservation should come first for the public good. My money is not My money is not going to be done. I must say that right now in mainland China, uh, in industrial farming is, is something that we all have to uh, take it seriously because to, if you look at the pesticide used in China is that to maintain the yield level like 20 years ago, you have to use double or triple amount of fertilizers and pesticides. And this will not be sustainable. It will not be sustainable for this uh, place too, because sooner or later they found that the land is so, uh, how to say, lacking certain kind of uh, nutrition, they will, not, they will not actually give you similar uh, level of uh, yield unless you throw tons and tons of pesticides. And that is a disaster too. On its way to Hong Kong, Dongzheng water passes through this area in Shenwu County, 
From its source in the Dongzhang Yuan, 40 million people depend on this river to survive. Outside Shenwu County office, banner after banner warn people that illegal coal and rare earth mining are against the law, and those who do it will be prosecuted. Shunwu is the biggest rare earth supplier in the mainland, and illegal mining leads to the illicit disposal of waste products upstream. This is the county government's biggest challenge in water conservation. Today we are planting 11 local species trees, and one of them is the Tongshu, which has also ecological value that stabilizes the soil and catch water, and also economic value for the local villagers, because when they grow seeds, and then they, the fruit can be pressed for oil, and the oil becomes an, an, a natural uh, resource. Hong Kong Green Groups, however, are doing their bit to try to improve the quality of the water. Since 2008, the Hong Kong Green Group Friends of the Earth has been planting these trees in the Dongjiang's upstream area with volunteers and local farmers. So far, they've planted 30,000 such trees in Dongjiang Yuan and here in Huangtian village. Professor Tang is the project consultant. He says that here, as in Dongjiang Yuan, village people depend on orange farming for their livelihood. Here too, pesticide and chemical fertilizer damage the ecosystem and pollute the water. Overfarming can also cause landslides and reduce water from the source. The damage may be permanent. Professor Tang doesn't think the government's doing enough to safeguard this important water source. Zhe 从这个山林或者从这个当地的生活来说,的确是不够的。但是这个只能是一步一步的来。The local orange farmers welcome the project. Some also see it as a form of poverty relief. Meanwhile, Hong Kong Green Groups are saying that Hong Kong also needs to stress its own requirements for the quality of Dongjiang water. Hong Kong people annually pay $3.5 billion for Dongjiang water. And I'd like to ask how much that fee goes into protecting the origin, the beginning of the Dongjiang River. No, we haven't asked for it. We haven't set conditions for holistic conservation of good water. All the mainland government is very conscious that the Dongjiang River is not unlimited. All the, all the sources of water from the lakes and rivers are now um, controlled and restrictly planned by the mainland government. If you look at the state council recently uh, announced several policy that by 2030, they won't actually foresee river source to increase much. We'll be back after the break to look at options for making Hong Kong more self-reliant in water supply. Welcome back. Compared with other places, Hong Kong's freshwater charges aren't really that high. But whether we actually have enough water to drink 
currently depends on supplies and agreements that only run to 2014. Not only that, we are wasteful. Our pipes and water mains are often old and Hong Kong's leakage rate is an astonishing 18%. So what can Hong Kong do to make itself more self-reliant in the future? At one time, when Hong Kong had a much smaller population, local water supplies met its needs. The history of public water supply in the territory began as early as 1851, when the government sank the first publicly funded wells. The first reservoir was built at Pok Fulham in 1863. The most recent was the High Island Reservoir, completed in 1978. 17 reservoirs now have a capacity of 586 million cubic meters of water. But that's far from enough. In 2010, Hong Kong's annual fresh water usage was 935 million cubic meters, almost double the potential local supply. The territory's lack of its own fresh water has sometimes led to water rationing. At its worst, in 1963, water was delivered to residents for only four hours in every four days, despite the fact that the government had already been buying Dongjiang water from Guangdong province since 1960. In 1975, the first desalination plant was built at Lokong Pai in Tun Mun to produce fresh water from seawater. Operation costs were high, and as the water supply from Dongjiang stabilized, the plant was shut down in 1982. It was finally dismantled in 1991. Dongjiang is now Hong Kong's main source of fresh water, accounting for 70 to 80 percent of total water consumption. Hong Kong's paying fixed lump sums of $3.7 billion in 2013 and $3.9 billion in 2014 for a guaranteed supply of up to 0.82 billion cubic meters a year. However, in recent years, Hong Kong hasn't actually used 0.82 billion cubic meters of water, and pollution along the Dongjiang River has raised questions about its quality. And it's not cheap. From 2005 to 2007, the Water Supplies Department studied the feasibility of reintroducing desalination in Hong Kong in pilot plants in Chunmun and Ablu Chow. The studies suggested that desalination by using the reverse osmosis technique could provide cost-effective water. In this year's budget, Financial Secretary John Zhang announced the plan to build a desalination plant in Jiangguan O. Another concern for Hong Kong residents is that the supply of Dongjiang water can be used as a political pawn when there are disagreements between the mainland and the SAR. <laughs> During a panel meeting in the Legislative Council on the 26th of March, legislators raised concerns about the quality of Dongjiang water. Some suggested the government should start desalination as soon as possible. With us in the studio are Vincent Mack, a chief engineer with the Water Supplies Department, and Raymond Ho of Momentum 107. Mr Mack, can I come to you first? Um, as we've just seen in that report, the government's now looking again at desalination as a major um, supply option for Hong Kong, mm -hmm. having abandoned it in, in previous years. So why is it back in the, on the agenda, and how much water do you think it will provide for Hong Kong's needs? Um, yes, it is now in the agenda, uh, but it's a different technology we use. Uh, we are now using the reverse osmosis instead of distillation we used before. Mm. And the reason why we need uh, uh, to have a desalination plant is we want to deal with the climate change effect. Uh, climate change will bring about extreme weather conditions, including extreme drought event. And we are experiencing some uh, reduction in uh, the amount of water we collect locally. 
and that's why we think we need some um, other source of, of water that can deal with this sort of climate change. Sea water is abundant. There's no uh, afraid of uh, being uh, a reduction of uh, the, the sea water due to climate change. And so we think the use of um, desalination at the moment is the right technology and the right time to deal with climate change. After all, the, um, the cost of desalination has reduced significantly um, recently. And I think it is about time we do some more detailed study. Okay, let, let me ask you, Raymond, I mean, you're rather sceptical about, or your group is rather sceptical about this. Why is that? Yeah, the, the, co the cost of deceleration is very high uh, compared with uh, other uh, source of uh, water supply. Uh, we are looking in the experience of uh, Singapore. They uh, uh, publicize the whole operation of uh, 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 deceleration and, and, and gain a very good result with a lower cost and higher transparency. So you think by some miracle, if a private <laughs> company yeah. undertook building a desalination plant, it, it would be cheaper than if the government did it? Is that what you're saying? Yes, yeah, yeah. cheaper than government well, operation. Let me put that to you. Is that, is that a realistic possibility? Well, probably uh, they may uh, try to maximize their, their, their profit by, by, by using different different um, treatment to the, to, to, to the, to the required standard. Um, I think from the government's perspective, uh, our emphasis, our focus is to ensure that the quality of the water we deliver fully comply with the World Health Organization drinking water standard. And that's why we, th we think that uh, uh, for delivering water, it's better to have the government to do it. Well, that's just go to another topic, which is um, Hong Kong's biggest source of water supply, of course, is from the mainland, mm. from Dongjiang. And um, there's criticism that, that we're actually paying too much for that. It's still cheaper than the cost of desalination at the moment. So using uh, Dongjiang water is still the most economic ways of supplying water we need. You know, at the moment, we are... Uh, the, the people in Hong Kong are using 1.2 billion cubic meter of water a year. And what we can collect locally on average is about 250 million mm. cubic meter. And we are implementing seawater for flushing that uh, help us to save about 270 million cubic meters of fresh water. But still, we have some sort of uh, 700 million cubic meter water we need to supply for our consumer. And Dongjiang water can provide a very reliable source and is the most economic source we have at the moment. Now, I know you're very critical of the <laughs> contract, yeah. well, but, I mean, isn't that a fact? I mean, the, 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 there is no choice. Uh, we, uh, Hong Kong, uh, almost 80% of uh, water supplies come from Dongjiang. Oh, but... Uh, the quality of the Dongzhuang water is uh, questionable. And also, Hong Kong people pay a higher price to buy the Dongzhuang water. This is unfair to Hong Kong people. When you compare with uh, Singapore uh, buying, buying water from Malaysia, Hong Kong people pay 264 times with the same water. <laughs> the, uh, the duration of uh, Malaysia uh, uh, and Singapore contract uh, is uh, more than uh, 60 years. But uh, uh, for the Hong Kong and mainland, only uh, three year, four year, we, we need to re resign this, and the terms uh, change. Uh, one more uh, serious issue is no matter how much water we consume, uh, uh, the, the contract is talking about lump sum payment. That means even we use less water, we need to pay Which the Which, in fact, is yeah. the current situation, isn't well, it? We um, don't use all the contracts yeah, amount. Sure. Well, I think the most mm -hmm. important thing for the government is to ensure that the citizens in Hong Kong have a reliable water supply that will be there even if we are facing a one in hundred years drought event. I'm telling you this because uh, in case such event occur, we will need uh, that 820 million cubic meter of water from Dongjiang, but 
if we say that uh, we just want to pay, say for example, 700 million uh, cubic meter, and if we want some more, we will, we will pay more, then probably that quantity of water will be allocated to others. You know, Dongjiang, uh, the water can be used is not unlimited. It's only about 10.7 um, billion cubic meter per year. And there are much more demand in the cities like uh, Samjan, Dongguan. And so if we do not reserve a quantity, hmm. then we will not have that quantity if we need it. Well, thank you very much for that. I'm afraid we are out of time. And that's it for this episode of The Pulse. Time for my usual reminder that if you've missed part of it, want to see more or even see it again, you can always go to the Pulse page on the RTHK website and you can download podcasts to peruse for hours on end. Also, if you want to chat to us or tell us what you think, go to our Facebook page, RTHK's The Pulse. We'll see you at the same time next week. Until then, goodbye. Oh, you know I'm going down to the river, baby. I must sit down on the ground.